Magandang gabi, MPC. Kasama na natin si Presidential o Communications Secretary Martin Antanar. Magandang gabi sa iyo, Rocky, at magandang gabi din sa lahat ng mga miyembro ng Malacanang Press Corps at ang mga manunood natin ngayon sa iba't ibang TV network companies, pati na rin sa social media at nakikinig sa radyo. The President met the IATF this afternoon for more than three hours, and at the same time, uh, he placed the entire Luzon under the enhanced community quarantine. After the meeting, the IATF ironed out the guidelines of the enhanced community quarantine, and to discuss the guidelines, we are joined by Secretary Ed Anyo of the DILG. Magandang gabi, sir. Magandang gabi naman. We are also joined by Secretary Menardo Guevara of the DOJ. Good evening, sir. Good evening. We also have Cabinet Secretary Carlo Lograles. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. And uh, by the way, Secretary Carlo Lograles is also the new spokesperson of the IATF as appointed by the President just uh, this afternoon. And the, the Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque. Good evening. Good evening. We are holding this special press conference tonight to discuss the initial guidelines that the IATF has drafted a few moments ago. CABSEC Carlo Nograles will now read the guidelines of the enhanced community quarantine for the entire Luzon. Maraming salamat, uh, Secretary Martin Andanar. Mga kababayan, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Narito po ang guidelines on the imposition of an enhanced community quarantine and the stringent social distancing measures over the entire Luzon, including the National Capital Region, effective at 12 midnight of 17 March 2020 and expiring on 12 midnight of 13 April 2020. Therefore, the following shall be implemented. Number one. Classes and all school activities in all levels shall continue to be suspended until 14 April 2020. The same directives to the Department of Education, Commission on Higher Education, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, and such other regulatory agencies LGUs and the Department of the Interior and Local Government with respect to the class suspension are reiterated. Number two, mass gatherings shall be prohibited. Number three, a strict home quarantine shall be observed in all households. Movement shall be limited to accessing basic necessities. Provision for food and essential health services shall be regulated and there will be heightened presence of uniformed personnel to enforce quarantine procedures. Number four, a work from home arrangement shall be implemented in the executive branch, except the PNP, AFP, PCG, and health and emergency frontline services, board, border control, and other critical services which shall ensure a skeletal workforce. Number five, only those private establishments providing basic necessities and such activities related to food and medicine production, i.e. public markets, supermarkets, groceries, convenience stores, hospitals, medical clinics, pharmacies, and drug stores, food preparation and delivery services, water refilling stations, manufacturing and processing plants of basic food products and medicines, banks, money transfer services, power, energy, water, and telecommunication supplies and facilities shall be open. 
in all such open establishments, their respective managements shall ensure the adoption of a strict skeletal workforce to support operations, as well as all strict social dis distancing measures. Business process outsourcing establishments and export-oriented industries shall remain operational subject to the condition that strict social distancing measures are observed, their respective personnel are provided appropriate temporary accommodation arrangements by 18 March 2020, and that a skeletal workforce shall be implemented. Media personnel shall be allowed to travel within the quarantine area, provided that within 72 hours from the issuance of this memorandum, media personnel intending to travel within the quarantine area shall secure an identification card from the Presidential Communications Operations Office. For purposes of the foregoing, transit to and from the above establishments anywhere within the area covered by the enhanced community quarantine shall be allowed. Security personnel of the establishments in the contained area shall likewise be allowed to travel within the quarantine area. Number six, mass public transport facilities shall be suspended. And number seven, land, air, and sea travel shall be restricted. Outbound passengers intending to depart the Philippines from any of the international airports in Luzon shall be allowed to travel for a period of 72 hours from effectivity of the enhanced community quarantine. Inbound international passengers in transit upon effectivity of the enhanced community quarantine shall be allowed entry subject to applicable quarantine procedures if coming from countries with existing travel restrictions imposed by the IATF. All inbound Filipino citizens, including their foreign spouse and children, if any, holders of permanent resident visa and holders of 9E diplomat visas issued by the Philippine government shall be allowed entry subject to applicable quarantine procedures if coming from countries with existing travel restrictions imposed by the IATF. The movement of cargoes within, to, and from the entire Luzon shall be unhampered. For this purpose, guidelines for the accompanying crew or personnel of transiting cargoes shall be formulated by the Department of Transportation. Land, air, and sea travel of uniformed personnel for official business, especially those transporting medical supplies, laboratory specimens related, related to the COVID-19 and other humanitarian assistance shall be allowed. And the Department of Social Welfare and Development and Department of Labor and Employment in coordination with the Department of Finance, Department of Budget and Management, and Department of Trade and Industry shall formulate programs, projects, and measures for the social amelioration of affected workers and residents of the area subject of the enhanced community quarantine. These measures may include, but shall not be limited to, moratorium on lease rentals, advancing a prorated 13th month pay, reprieve in utility bills, and assistance to micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises. The DSWD is further directed to institute measures to expedite the distribution of food assistance to the most affected residents of the entire Luzon. Failure to abide by the foregoing guidelines and measures shall be subjected to appropriate action, both criminal and administrative in accordance with relevant laws and regulations. For this purpose, the Department of Justice is directed to initiate appropriate charges as may be warranted. 
The IATF, together with the Executive Secretary, Cabinet Secretary, Secretaries of National Defense, Environment and Natural Resources, Trade and Industry, Social Welfare and Development, Finance, Education, Agriculture, Chief of Staff of the AFP, Heads of the Philippine Army, Philippine Navy, Philippine Air Force, PCG, and the PNP, and such other agencies or entities as the IATF may invite shall continue to convene daily to study and continuously review the measures and guidelines in addressing the COVID-19 situation until such time that the health event subsides. The IATF, through the DOH, is directed to disseminate information to the public on the steps and measures to be undertaken relative to the COVID-19 situation during the period of enhanced community quarantine for the entire Luzon for immediate compliance. Thank you very much. Can we have Secretary Anya or no, question, question and answer? And MPC? <coughs> Maricel? Sir, good evening. Sir, just a clarification about the suspension of mass transport, meaning LRT, MRT, bus, and jeepney, wala po talaga. Yes, that's correct. Pero yung mga private vehicles are allowed to travel. Pwede po yun. Yes. But only for those who are exempted. Kasi okay, may mga exemptions mean? tayo sa, pri sa public and sa private establishments. For government, meron po tayong exemptions, di ba? Especially the frontline services. And then sa private establishments, meron tayong tayong mga exemptions. But mass transportation will be suspended. Meaning, sir, yung mga private cars of ordinary people, they are not allowed to travel. Even if they are going out to buy groceries, food supplies, and medicines. Not allowed. No, they will be allowed. Subject to, to, yeah. subject nga to, um, to, uh, do yung exemptions, di ba? So, nakasulat dito, um, yung, uh, pub, yung basic necessities, like public markets, supermarkets, groceries, convenience stores. Mm -hmm. So, those will continue to operate. So therefore, you may go to them. Uh, if there's no public transportation, then <coughs> private, or you'll have to walk. And yung mga allowed sir na bumiyahe, like yung mga health workers and mga PPOs, same pa rin po yung requirement. Like they <coughs> just have to show their IDs or certificate of employment. Yes. Wala pang changes. Though. Correct. Correct. Okay. The idea here is to keep everybody on home quarantine. We try not to dwell dun sa mga exemptions the rule in fact yung exemptions ang ano natin dito ang mindset dapat natin dito is um, in case of doubt stay at home thank you sir okay and joy and then joyce good evening sirs Sir, can you walk us through how did the president reach the decision to declare and enhance a community quarantine? I understand several CABSEX have already recommended lockdown. Why, why not lockdown? Um, meron lang tayong nakita naman ninyo, even in the previous declarations, meron tayong general community quarantine and then meron po tayong enhanced community quarantine. So we never use the word lockdown, like I said, because this, this is a technical term. Uh, and we try to use a technical term in a medical term uh, because this is a medical emergency. This is a public health emergency. So we only use terms that have a definition. At ang definition nga natin ngayon from a generalized or general um, quarantine, uh, community quarantine, nandito na po tayo sa level ng enhanced community quarantine. And the reason why we're going to an enhanced community quarantine, like um, all of the indicators show us the need to, including yung declaration ng pandemic ng WHO, including yung mga rising uh, cases natin, and uh, including the fact that um, uh, many of our LGUs anyway have already begun uh, declaring their own LGUs as uh, community uh, quarantine. So therefore, by declaring an enhanced community quarantine in the entire island of, uh, well, the entire Luzon, uh, then um, all LGUs now pantay-pantay uh, na yung ating mga, kumbaga nag, uh, lahat na tayo, nasa common ground na po tayo ang buong Luzon. 
Sir, I understand meron tayong, ayun nga, sir, may general uh, community quarantine, then nag-progress tayo to enhance community quarantine. Many are wondering, may next step pa ba doon? May next phase for that? Um, we'll take it on a day-to-day -day basis. So right now, like, uh, like we just announced na daily po mag-meet, mag-assess po ang ating IATF um, to study the numbers, to look at uh, the COVID-19 cases, uh, and to determine no, um, yung uh, on the ground, no, make adjustments uh, kung ano yung mga nakikita nating realities on the ground. Justice Secretary, Sir, um, so the people will not be alarmed. What will be the basis for them to be arrested during these times? Of, uh, right. Uh, considering the gravity of the present situation, our police and other law enforcement agents may effect arrests under against, uh, against violators. No arrests of violators under any of the following laws. Number one. Article 151 of the Revised Penal Code on resistance or disobedience to a person in authority. You will please note that uh, this offense is uh, punishable by arresto mayor and a fine not exceeding 100,000 pesos. If committed with acts of violence, then the person may be liable for direct assault. And that is a much more serious offense, no? which is punishable by prison correctional or a fine of, one, of not more than 200,000 pesos. Number two, um, any violation may also be punishable under Public Act number 11332. This is the recent statute, and this is entitled Mandatory Reporting of Notifiable Diseases. And uh, the, the, the uh, provision that is penalized is that one for non-cooperation. Uh, and the penalty that may be imposed by the court if found guilty uh, is a fine of not more than 50,000 pesos or imprisonment of not more than six months. And there are also penal provisions under our Quarantine Act. And uh, the penalty would be more or less the same as the more recent uh, statute on mandatory reporting of notifiable diseases. So this will come into play only pag talagang merong serious resistance or disobedience uh, to our law enforcers. So I, I uh, uh, plead with everyone to just simply uh, give your cooperation. And uh, this is something that is temporary. This is uh, for the good of all of us the uh, police officers and uh, supported by the armed forces uh, are not uh, the enemy. They are not uh, there uh, uh, to, uh, to harass us, but to protect us. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Joyce and then Pia. Secretary Nograles, you've mentioned that every day naman may meeting yung interagency task force and this is in effect yung nabanggit po natin na enhanced community quarantine until April 13. Does that mean po pwedeng hindi umabot hanggang April 13 yung implementation ng communi enhanced community quarantine? Yes. Pwede siya mapaikli? Pwede siya mapaikli if the circumstances warrant. No? At ayoko rin sabihin pero pwede rin humaba depending on the situation. That's why it's on a day-to-day basis assessment. Okay. How will this coincide, yung strict uh, home quarantine with the curfew being implemented by or being enforced by LGUs? But hindi na natin sinama yung... Uh, mm, superseded na siya ng curfew because curfew is back to home ka pag sinabi mo curfew. But this time, it's strict home quarantine. So superseded na yung mga curfews that were being imposed by the LGUs. So this is now strict home quarantine. Wala nang curfew na pinag-uusapan because... Um, <coughs> Kumbaga, sa words pa ni Secretary Anyo, 24 hours curfew na ito. Because ang rule, ang general rule is stay at home. If you leave your home for these establishments to buy the, necess the necessities ng bahay ninyo, only one person ang pwedeng bumili. And then, hindi pwede isama yung buong pamilya. Hindi pwede dalawa yan. Dapat isa lang ang bibili. Because again, ang general rule is that home quarantine muna tayo 
wala mo nang galawan except for these necessary industries no and establishments and of course yung vital government services gusto natin yung walang galawan kasi we want to stop the virus from spreading so put it in your head that the general rule is stay at home pero sir yung idea for example of a curfew kasi di ba may limited hours meaning anyone from the family sabi kahit isang member of the family can buy necessities even beyond 8 pm Mm. So, um, I know what you're saying, pero siguro we will ask the establishments also, perhaps in the next, uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, we will ask establishments to close us at, at a certain time, perhaps. No? It's something that will take up. Uh, para pag magsarado yan, then you have no business already being out okay. of your home. Sir, dun sa meeting ng Interagency Task Force, napag-usapan ba yung recommendation na magkaroon ng isang place lang for all COVID-19 positive cases para mas confined? Was it discussed or was it approved by the President? It wasn't discussed, but may I um, ask uh, Secretary Duque? Uh, hindi po something. ito napag-usapan sa IATF, pero ganun pa man. Ito po ay uh, napag-usapan. Uh, in fact, nung uh, nagkaroon ng... Uh, hearing sa uh, Camara del Representante. This was, I think, last uh, Wednesday last week. So, tinitingnan po natin ang uh, Lung Center kung pwede siyang uh, maging uh, COVID-19 uh, hospital. But ang uh, sabi sa akin ng Executive Director, si Mr. Vincent Balanag, medyo sa ngayon may hirapan dahil meron na rin silang mga pasyente Uh, na uh, kahit na hindi siya, meron siya mga COVID-19 patients. In fact, sabi niya, meron pa siyang 15 available isolation rooms. Uh, ngunit yung iminungkahing ko nga sa kanya mula sa Congress na kung pwedeng gawin specialized COVID-19 hospital. Sabi niya, mahirapan sa ngayon dahil marami pa rin sila mga non-COVID-19 patients. So, kailangan talaga planuhin ito maigi saan ilalagay itong mga Uh, non-COVID-19 patients. Conceptually, okay naman uh, to uh, uh, consider this. But the operationalization uh, needs further study. May gusto rin pong idagdag si Secretary Anyo. Uh, on the part of the uh, local government, uh, kasama doon sa aming memo circular, yung pag-identify uh, ng uh, isolation unit. This could be a private house, this could be Uh, building or this could be one condominium, depende sa kakayahan ng local government unit. Sa mga COVID uh, patients na positive na asymptomatic or with mild symptoms, kaya siyang i-accommodate ng local government unit at uh, sa designated isolation unit ay doon lang ilagay yung mga pasyente kasi asymptomatic naman ito. Para ang ano, ang uh, ating hospital, magkoconcentrate na lang sa mga ano, mayroong mga serious symptoms na kailangan talaga ng interventions. Okay. Uh, Pia? Okay, Secretary Nograles. Says, uh, sir, you said that outbound passengers shall be allowed to travel within 72 hours from the effectivity of the quarantine. Ibig sabihin, sir, land, air, and sea travel po ito. This says outbound passengers intending to depart from the Philippines from any of the international airports in Luzon so shall be allowed to travel for a period of 72 hours. Napag-usapan kasi ito because ayaw natin, mer baka meron mga gustong uh, pumunta ng uh, abroad. No? Gustong mga, iniiwasan po natin yung mga masastranded na mga pasahero. So ito yung mga napag-usapan namin sa interagency task force kung paano treatment natin na sa airports, mga tourists na gustong, gustong umalis ng bansa at bumalik sa kanilang mga bansa. What about yung mga nasa Luzon, sir, na gustong umuwi sa kanilang mga uh, residents sa Cebu, for example, or in Mindanao? No more. No more. As we said, that falls under mass public transport facility shall be suspended. So number six. Sir, yung inbound passengers, they will be allowed to enter Luzon until when, sir? Inbound international passengers in transit upon effectivity of the enhanced community quarantine shall be allowed entry subject to applicable quarantine procedures. So until when, sir? Walang, wala naman time. Uh, Secretary Anya. Yeah, uh, this provision is applicable to Filipinos 
and holders of uh, permanent uh, resident uh, visa, sila yung po pwede nating tanggapin, but they'll be sub subjected to a mandatory 14 days uh, quarantine. So, sir, after seven, to be clear, sir, after 72 hours, no one uh, can go out of the country from Luzon, sir? Yes. Okay. Out, out of the country, international, yes. But, sir, uh, but again, the general rule is mass public transport facility shall be suspended. Yun po yung general rule. Exception to the rule na yung number seven. Okay, sir. sir, will we be closing the borders of Luzon? Mag Kailan po mag start yan, sir? Um, yes. Uh, Tonight, 12 midnight. 12 midnight. So, sir, ano na po yung mga naging paghahanda po natin, sir? Um, um, while we're speaking, the entire Philippine National Police is already um, discussing their protocols and their procedures para dun sa uh, implementation ng enhanced community quarantine of the entire Luzon. Okay, SILG, ano, sir? Um, up until kanina, uh, nung nag-uwi nag po yung mga tao, may mga checkpoints pa rin po kahit na na-announce na, na yung enhanced community quarantine. What will happen to the checkpoints um, around Metro Manila, sir? Well, ang mangyayari, iba na ngayon magiging configurations. Mayroon pa rin tayong uh, uh, uniform services sa mga key positions, key strategic uh, areas. Mayroon tayong mga roving patrols. At kasama natin ang... Uh, uh, governors, mayors, barangay captains na mag-i-implement uh, itong ating uh, enhanced uh, community quarantine. So, nakatandem yan yung ating mayor, yung ating chief of police, at saka yung ating local uh, uh, military field commander. So, sila yung magpapatupad nito in the entire uh, island of Luzon. Sir, um, I'm sorry, marami pong questions, sir. Kasi you said that uh, yung mga health workers will still be able to go to work, yung mga BPOs. How will they get to work, sir, kapag suspended yung public transportation? Um, yes, uh, initially kasi ganito, ano, uh, inano namin yung lahat ng public trans transportation. And then, from there, uh, each uh, LGUs uh, will determine now the requirement and then uh, LGUs can provide transportation. We can also require some public utilities to uh, operate certain numbers of vehicles. That is commensurate to those who will use. We don't want to, to uh, open all public transportation because that would actually encourage people to move. Our objective is to restrict movement of people to the maximum. So, nag adjust kami habang pinatutupad natin ito. Sig siguro to clarify everything, no? Um, ano na to eh? Parang ang ating ano natin dito, ang situation natin dito is at, it's as if uh, calamity. ba? So, in a calamity, suspended, walang transportation because there's a calamity that happened in a certain zone. So, that is how we operationalize now. That's why we're on a state of calamity. Sir, Marami nagtatanong, sir, TNVS, sir, um, papayagan pa, Grab, Angkas, no? No, no. no more. Taxi. No more. No. Public transportation suspended. No. Like I said, as if uh, calamity, it's on a state of calamity, so public transportation in a state of calamity uh, suspended yan because of the calamity, correct? So this is where the LGUs come in. Dito yung papasok yung coordination natin with the LGUs to provide the means for transportation. Uh, especially dun sa mga um, exempted. Sir, can you enumerate ano po yung mga establishments that will be allowed to open? So we have groceries, we have supermarkets. Yeah. What about restaurants, fast no, foods? Uh, restaurants, uh, yung kolatilya lang natin sa restaurants is it's supposed to be fru food preparation and delivery services. So not restaurants sit down, but restaurants, not, not even restaurants, it's food preparation and delivery services. So, magde-deliver, hindi ka pupunta dun sa establishment para kumain at mag-upo at kumain. It's for delivery. The, the mindset, the idea is that um, instead of the person going to the market, it's the delivery person uh, delivering to the home. So, mas less ang movement kung ganon. Delivery services will be available, sir. We yes, food, food preparation as, as uh, limited only to the food, food delivery.
Okay. Or may grab food delivery food panda. So open yun sir. <laughs> Ang iniisip kasi namin it's the establishment that is delivering. The establishment that's again, like I said, um, in case of doubt, no. In case of doubt, no. Secretary Duque, uh, ilan na ho ba yung na-test natin for COVID since we started yung testing? Almost a thousand. Close Almost to a, a thousand. thousand. Oh, I was trying to open my PUI summary, pero hirap-hirap lang mag... Anyway, mga ganun, a thousand. Okay. Oh. Kay uh, Secretary Nograles, kasi may mga nabanggit na mga exemptions, yung BPOs, export, and then we have health workers. But then we also suspended public transport. So how can they go to their workplaces? For example, they have don't they don't have their um, own car. Kaya nga sa BPO, if you notice that the um, conditions for the P BPO is that by March 18 of 2020, they must provide appropriate temporary accommodation arrangements. Otherwise, um, they are not they will not be allowed to um, operate because again we are trying to limit the movement. And so uh, Secretary of the DTI, Mon Lopez, has uh, committed to the IATF that he will reach out and uh, talk to the BPO uh, establishments and the export-oriented uh, industries to operationalize this okay. um, directive. How about yung health workers, yung media? Paano sila? Like, like I said, um, we are trying to limit the movements here. So we cannot uh, say open on public transportation for certain people because that's very difficult to control anymore. So again, when in doubt, stay at home. Okay, isa na lang po. Pinapaklarify lang. So yung foreign travelers leaving Manila will not be allowed after 72 hours from midnight tonight. Because um, yung based on the discussion sa IATF, those who really want to leave will really leave within 72 hours. Those who cannot, then they have to make up their minds. Do you leave or do not leave? So we have to put a time limit and the 72 hours is a time limit. So otherwise, stuck sila dito? Yes. Stranded then, sila dito? Not stranded. It's by their voluntary, um, that's that's their choice. Voluntary choice. So may yan. leeway sila mag-rebook? Yes. Nung flight, yung three, three days na yun. Basta ang iniwasan, uh, natin, hours. ang iniwasan po natin ay may mga involuntarily stranded here. So we're giving them 72 hours to fly. Uh, so that we assume that after 72 hours, it is your decision to stay here. Salamat po. Okay, Mela. And then Maricel. Uh, for CABSEC Nograles, I know marami rin pong media na nagmo-monitor today. Sir, uh, just to clear, paano po yung magiging sistema for media accreditation? Yes, so um, sa media accreditation, kaya nang sinabi natin, again, within 72 hours, you are supposed to get an issuance um, of an identification card no, to be issued by the PCOO. So ang PCOO naman, merong, um, meron naman silang sistema for accrediting media, um, accredited, accredited media personnel, even for the entire Luzon. And the reason that we're doing this is to, in order for us to facilitate and help the implementation of the community quarantine, enhanced community quarantine, especially in the enforcement ng PNP. And I think we'll probably give uh, Secretary Andanar a chance to explain. Thank you, Sir Carlo. Again, uh, we reiterate the media can avail uh, PCOO slash IPC media ID so they can continue with their day-to-day -day work informing the public. All media workers must obtain their identification cards from the News and Information Bureau. I will now give you the details of how to do this. Special Media pass for journalists covering different beats in Metro Manila during the state of public health emergency will be issued by the PCOO through the International Press Center. For those interested, please send through this, these 
email addresses, intlpresscenter at gmail.com or ipc0182 at gmail.com. And these are the following requirements. Number one, letter of request from your respective media agencies. And number two, a passport size photo. The contact person is Lorina de los Reyes, and you may contact her on 0918-979-2861 or 5336-6095. In the meantime, uh, all bona fide media IDs will be honored by the Philippine National Police for the next 72 hours. So it is very important that the all media workers in Metro Manila submit their credentials to the IPC. Uh, and also to add to that, uh, we discussed at the IATF na uh, merong I, um, merong gagawin na apat na live points ang ating uh, PTV kung saan uh, itong mga live points na ito doon pupunta yung mga miyembro ng IATF kung meron sila mga public address. So ito yung mga live points. Number one, here, here at the palace, uh, the, press, uh, the press briefing room. Ang ikalawa, dito sa NDRRMC, sa Camp Aguinaldo at pwede rin sa Camp Krame, Palitan. Uh, pangatlo sa tanggapan ng Department of Health at yung pang-apat sa PTV. Now, we are doing this so that uh, those media organizations that are, 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 are very careful also uh, na ayaw nilang mahawa ng COVID-19 ang kanilang mga ang kanilang mga media workers ay uh, pwedeng mag-hook up lang sa PTV4 mag-hook up din sa Radio Pilipinas at uh, we also have uh, arranged for a virtual presser uh, pwede rin kayong magtanong through the internet using Skype or what have you and you can also uh, call uh, our live points by uh, phone patch. So yun lang po. Thank you. Question? Okay. Um, Maricel. Secretary Andanar, clarification lang. So does it mean that once you're a bona fide media practitioner, automatic na na-approve yun? Hindi naman siya, like, we won't limit the representative per TV network or media organization? Hindi po, kasi naintindihan po natin na halimbawa sa isang uh, sa isang dyaryo, uh, hindi lang naman yung reporter ang kailangan. Mahalaga din yung mga technical staff, yung nag imprenta yung mga editors, yung mga photographers. The same way sa television, yung ating mga engineer na magpapatakbo ng ating mga transmitter, uh, lahat to na ito, this is a, a, a long uh, value chain of important people na nagpapatakbo ng ating industriya. So, that's why I said um, media workers. So, as long as merong, merong uh, requirement na, na ibibigay, yung sulat galing sa, sa ating uh, mga tanggapan at yung passport photo. Okay, so, PCOO will not deny any media practitioner for as long as they have mm -hmm. complete requirements? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Secretary Anyo, clarification lang po. How are we going to um, address the issue on the slum area. Kasi di ba, we're technically, we want to implement yung mga social distancing, pero paano yung mga ganong lugar? Well, uh, talagang yan ay uh, malaking challenge, but uh, they have to follow social distancing. Mayroon tayong magro-robing doon, may mga iikot doon, barangay officials, uh, LGUs. Uh, kailangan talaga implement, pero nasa kanilang pagdidisiplina din eh kailangan talaga sumunod so it's really a challenge but 
uh, kailangan din ang, ang information dissemination para malaman nila kung ano mga dapat gawin uh, on their own uh, personal effort. So, tuloy-tuloy yung ating uh, pag-info uh, campaign sa mga lugar na ito. Kasi sir, for example, doon sa Payatas area, yung isang bahay nila, 11 agad yung tao, sometimes they sleep nang nakaupo. So, are we going to provide, um, let's say, areas for them to stay? Well, kanya-kanyang uh, uh, initiative ng LGUs, no? Uh, kaya nga ang ano dito, ang key talaga dito, ang mga local chief executives. Uh, mm. The president is the chief executive. Sa mga bawat uh, ba political uh, subdivisions natin from the province, uh, municipalities, barangays, they have to do their job. Now, stay at home. Kung halimbawa sa isang bahay ay uh, naka-quarantine sila doon sa loob at wala namang impacted doon, okay sila doon. Now, kung halimbawa may mag-manifest ng symptom doon, papasok na naman yung ating barangay, yung Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams, dudalhin yung person under monitoring or person under investigation doon sa isolation unit. So, doon sila papasok doon. Um, Secretary Duque, uh, meron na po ba tayong concrete plan Uh, doon sa test kits because I understand medyo kulang po yung uh, test kits natin ngayon. So, meron na po ba tayong uh, ginagawa for that? May tatlo pong panggagalingan ang karagdagan test kits natin. Uh, kasi sa ngayon, um, puros galing sa WHO. Ngunit, alam naman natin na may global, global supply chain uh, limitations. No? So, ang uh, UPNIH ay meron na uh, uh, pagkipag-ugnayan sa isang pribadong sektor na pinungunahan ni Dr. Destura. I think you've heard about uh, this person. At meron nga silang na imbento na rapid diagnostic test, PCR uh, based. PCR, ibig po sabihin, polymerase chain reaction. Ito po yung parang pinakamakina na nag-fingerprint ng COVID-19 virus. Para sigurado na Katulad na katulad ito nung galing sa Wuhan. Ano? Uh, yan, eh, uh, pa, ang unang uh, plano dyan ay patatakbuhin niyan parallel with the RITM para masiguro kung masiguro ang accuracy uh, and the uh, measurement of accuracy is actually uh, two. Number one is specificity of the test. Ibig sabihin, talagang for COVID-19 siya, hindi kung ano-ano mga viruses na iba ang pwedeng mapikap, and sensitivity. Ibig sabihin nun, at a certain concentration ng virus, dapat ay napipikap na niya kahit na mababa pa. So once all of these are satisfied, uh, and uh, after say uh, uh, 200, 300 parallel runs are uh, achieved with high level uh, of uh, uh, confidence, as to the results. Pwede na natin i-roll out yan sa atin UPNIH lab or sa Lung Center of the Philippines lab uh, or doon sa uh, lima natin sub-national laboratories. So, kanina may dumating, well, actually, Friday may dumating na 500 uh, test kits from uh, the South Korean uh, government at kanina may dumating na 500 yung last uh, Friday, magdadagdag ng another 5 to 10,000 Uh, this week. <clears throat> Tapos yung sa China naman, dumating yung donation 2,000 and then by Wednesday, kung walang problema ngayon, by Wednesday, another, another 10,000. So, unti-unti, nagkakaroon na tayo ng uh, maraming mga uh, kakayahan uh, o rapid diagnostic test. Pero syempre, ang kinakailangan po dito, masiguro natin ang kanyang uh, quality, yung kanyang accuracy. And once na ma-ensure na yung accuracy, do we also plan, sir, na magkaroon ng parang ginagawa sa Korea na drive-through test for all, kaya bumaba yung kanilang mga cases? Yung sa And South Korea yeah. kasi, dahil sila mismo ang nag-manufacture ng mm -hmm. uh, rapid diagnostic test, ang uh, kanilang kakayahan ay hindi bumababa sa 15,000 tests a day. So kung ano man yung atin nakuha dito, talagang uh, ika nga mga uh, excess lang na nakiusap tayo para mabigyan. Uh, ganun pa man, uh, kung ang atin sariling test na 
uh, na ginawa ng uh, UPNIH at saka yung health tech, isang pribadong kumpanya, ay uh, mapalawig natin ito. Ay hindi magtatagal, makakapag-test tayo ng mas marami. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, DC Double B and then from? Okay. Uh, sir, good evening po, Secretary Nograles. Sir, Manny Farkas po, DC Double B. Sir, magpapatanong lang po iba sa mga listeners namin ngayon. Uh, nabanggit po yung banks. Kasama rin po ba yung banko sa bukas at yung mga money remittance centers, yes. yung mga pera padala? Yes. At or, papano daw po, siyempre hindi po kasama sa exempted, yung mga taong lalabas, where they be allowed para po pumunta sa banko or dun po sa mga pera padala centers para kumuha ng kailangan nilang pera or magpadala ng pera? Yes. Banks, money transfer services are will continue. So these are part of those basic necessities. Opa. So patuloy pa rin po, banko and money transfer services. Opa. Sir, meron din po nagpadala rin po, sir, listener namin. Sabi naman niya, may payment daw po sa BIR, VAT, hindi ako familiar. Paano uh, raw po yun, sir, yung mga BIR we'll, uh, We will make the pronouncement when the time comes. We have to discuss this with our economic team muna Opa. with regard dun sa BIR. So one step at a time muna tayo. <clears throat> Apo. Sir, tapos uh, kay Secretary Anyo po, sir. Um, nabanggit po kasi kanina doon sa statement po ni President Duterte about yung karinderya. Um, saka po yung sari-sari store. Uh, alam naman natin, sir, na pag iskinita, malilit ang kalye. Minsan, mas mahirap pigilan yung paglabas po ng tao at any given time. Uh, paano po natin magagawa yun na ma-insure na malilimit din yung paglabas nila or mapapakisuyuan na magsasara sila pagdating po ng curfew hours? Yes, so oh, ililimit talaga natin dito sa delivery service. No, kasi halimbawa, sari-sari store, uh, ini-encourage mo yung mga tao na pumunta diyan eh. So dapat ang tao nag-stay at home, kaya nga delivery eh para nasa bahay lang talaga yung tao. Yung karinderya kung mayroon siyang delivery service, okay din 'yon. Pero kung pupunta yung tao ng pagkakain, hindi pa pwedeng 'yon. Sir, finally po, I don't know kung si Secretary Andan or kayo po, Secretary Anyo, better na sumagot. Um, alam, alam ni Secretary Andan or to, yung roving, uh, roving reporters po, uh, meron po bang guidelines doon po sa limitation ng coverage po ng media during this time? Uh, yung pupunta kami sa mga borders or sa mga uh, kung saan man nag-ooperate ng mga police uh, or kinakailangan lang po, ang allowed lang sa amin is from sa bahay namin, papunta po sa mga opisina namin. Ang uh, si Secretary Andanar actually ang uh, mag-manage sa inyo, uh, mayroong daily reporting pagkatapos at least uh, mayroon tayong tinatawag na daily checking of your vital signs also to make sure na okay kayo. And then alap din dapat ni Secretary Andanar yung area na i-cover ninyo para may coordination din sa enforcer. As long as uh, after nung 72 hours na binibigay sa atin ng DILG at ng PNP ay makapagbigay tayo o makakuha tayo ng ID mula sa IPC uh, because that's the only way na pag meron, kang, pag meron ka ng ID, hindi ka nasisitay ng police after 72 hours. So, uh, dun sa mga roving, sa mga night beat reporters, graveyard reporters, uh, they can still go around and and uh, gather their news. Uh, pero kailangan lang na magpa-check sila araw-araw uh, doon sa kanilang kumpanya or doon sa, uh, sa police station na kung saan sila tatambay. And uh, at the same time, uh, you know, you, I think it's your civic responsibility to, to uh, wash your hands and also, and also be hygienic. Thank you po. Uh, may tanong muna dito si Henry Uri. Yun daw po sa mga advertiser nila, pwede ba daw ma-exempt sa quarantine ang mga employee and distributor ng mga medical supplies, especially alcohol and sanitizers? Distributor. Yung distributor daw po ng ano, kung exempted din sa quarantine. Um, basta mahulog sila sa number five, ano? Uh, nakalagay naman dito, um, food and medicine production. Ang advertiser, hindi. Ang advertiser, 
Hindi naman. Like, like I said, when in doubt, no. Okay. Yung mga method ba siya sabi mo? Yung mga nag-present? Can I make a clarification? Uh, isa sa mga exemptions ay ang uh, uh, pharmacies or butika. Diba? So, normal lang na itong mga alcohol dapat doon ay uh, pwedeng mabili. Hindi kung saan-saan. Salamat. Okay. Uh, si Margo. Good evening, Health Secretary. Um, given po yung mga donations natin ng mga test kits from South Korea and sa China, magiging sapat na po ba yung test kits natin para mas mabilis yung pag-confirm mga cases ngayon? Yeah, apaligay ko magiging sapat kasi unang-una, meron din tayong pondo na 240 million na inaprubahan ng Economic Development Cluster last week at 6,000 per test. That's uh, 40,000 is the target. Uh, testing capacity, so that will require a budget of 240 million. Uh, uh, that's, uh, of course, on top of the uh, donations coming from South Korea and uh, China. So, mapaparami na po ang uh, atin kakayahan, mapapa, mapapalaki ang kakayahan mag, mag, makapanuri ng uh, throat and nose uh, swabs ng mga uh, persons uh, or patients under investigation. Sir, clarification ka lang din. Yung, mga sim yung, yung, may, yung may mga symptoms lang po yung pwedeng makapag-test. Uh, sa ngayon, dahil nga meron tayong limitasyon pa, yun lang muna ang priority natin. Kailangan kasi ma-rationalize natin yung testing in the face of uh, limitations. Sir, last na, yung kay Senator Zubiri, bakit po kailangan niya makapag-test ng twice to further confirm his condition na positive siya sa COVID-19? Kasi ang sabi niya, after 10 days, magkakaroon siya ulit ng test and he's hoping na negative po yung result. Yeah, ganoon naman po yung uh, protocol natin at uh, ito ay susundin natin para makapaniguro tayo na wala na yung uh, virus sa kanyang katawan. So, lahat po ng, kahit mga ordinary patients, sir, twice po natin na-check o chine-check kung confirm sila sa COVID-19? Meron kasi itong history of uh, uh, exposure with two other persons who had a exposure to a positive COVID patient. One of the resource persons they uh, had during one of their hearings, I think about early last week or two weeks ago. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joyce and then Ian. Pia, last four na tayo. Pia and then Ace. Sir, just to emphasize na open yung mga supermarkets and yet hindi po pwede ang mass transportation. And then yun nabanggit nyo kanina, Secretary Nograles, maglakad na lang. Uh, papano po yung, yung location if, for example, talagang malayo dun sa particular household, yung supermarket, and then only one person from the family is allowed to go? Hindi po ba mahirap yun? Well, the LGU should be providing transportation for them. Maring, maring pwedeng mag initiative na lang siguro ang LGU. Pero that could be a that could be an option. Like I said, um, mahirap mang gawin no ay itong mga guidelines na to. Uh, pero kailangan nating gawin. Kailangan natin striktuhan ang lahat ng mga ito. Um, otherwise, kung magbibigay tayo purus ng mga exemptions, ibabalik rin po tayo dun sa maraming galawan. So, humingi po kami ng paumanhin, ito ay ginagawa po natin para sa protection ng bawat isa. And you also mentioned sir that food assistance will be given to poorest uh, families yes. in the communities. Pa, paano po natin gagawin yun, sir, and yung process noon, and what kind of food assistance we will be giving yes. to them? So, right now, um, state of calamity na po, no? Ang entire Luzon. So, because of that state of calamity, then uh, yung mga iba't ibang mga LGUs can also declare a state of calamity within their LGUs, respective um, localities, para sila po ay makatap na dun sa kanilang calamity funds, no? at ang QRF nila, ang Quick Response Funds po nila. And uh, based on that, then uh, it is incumbent upon the LGU no? uh, to first be able to be the first responders dun sa mga constituents po nila na kailangan natin uh, mapangalagaan in terms of uh, yung mga marginalized no? uh, and impoverished communities natin at ang ating mga um, constituents. So like I said, ang mindset po natin dito, kumbaga, uh, we are under a state of calamity. So, ang operas operationalization is as if yung LGU is under a calamity. So, tulad ng kung may nangyaring calamity po sa inyong LGU, alam naman ng LGU kung anong dapat gawin. 
Ano po yung specific na food assistance? Uh, bigas? Mm. Uh, ano po yung so, particular na matatanggap? So, based dun sa LGU, meron naman tayong mga food assistance packages na alam ng LGU anong gagawin. No? And then, just like in a, in, a, in a calamity nga po. Just like in a calamity, the LGU already knows what type of uh, food packs or uh, food assistance ang ibibigay nila sa mga constituents nila na affected by the calamity. And then, uh, mag-augment po yung DSWD. So, si, even si DSWD now is already preparing yung mga calamity and food assistance packs that they usually use in times of calamities. So, yun po ang magiging um, effect po ng state of calamity. And yung pag-operationalize uh, pag natin nitong mga ito. So, in other words, yung mga may kaya, yung mga may means, will have to provide for their own means we will have to prioritize, prioritize those who have no means, just like in any calamity. To Secretary Duque, pinapatanong lang po. Um, as per the WHO, all nations have to be ready with respirators and oxygen as we expect the need for these as COVID uh, cases to rise. Do we have an inventory? Oh, yes, we do. Hindi ko lang memoriado. Pasensya na po. Ay, uh, hindi ko maalala. But uh, kasama po yan sa paghahanda. Uh, yung pag uh, pag uh, susukat ng kakayahan ng atin po ng uh, mga ospital na makapag uh, pang, makapangasiwa ng uh, mga critical or serious COVID-19 infections. So mahalaga po 'yan dahil pag nagkaroon ng tinatawag natin massive pneumonia or acquired uh, uh, acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome ay kinakailangan i-hook up sila sa respirator dahil on their own, hindi nila kayang uh, huminga. So we guarantee that we have enough supply? Uh, well, as of uh, this time, yes, I think we have enough supply. But we still don't know to what extent uh, the transmission or the rate of infection will go. To Secretary Anya, pinapatanong yes. lang din po. We, uh, are we going to impose a gun ban? Uh, actually, hindi na nga pwedeng lumabas yung mga tao sa bahay. So, automatically, kahit na walang gun ban, wala na rin pwedeng gumala na mayroong barel. At uh, kung halimbawa, mayroon sa exemption, the rule of the law will apply. Kung wala siyang PTC, uh, hindi siya pwede magdala mag, uh, ng barel. So, <coughs> sa ngayon, nakikita natin na Maximum uh, talagang limited ang movement ng mga tao. Dapat lahat nasa bahay ngayon. Mandatory home quarantine tayo lahat. Okay. For Secretary Duque, kay Bella Carriaso, exempted daw po ang BPO pero yung health cards nila nagbigay ng notice just now na di daw po covered ang pandemic like COVID. Uh, gobyerno na lang ang uh, mga ngalaga kung sakasakaling uh, kinakailangan silang uh, ma-ospital. Pero patitignan ko yung policy nila with the uh, HMOs. Kung baka naman meron na uh, kulatilya doon na masyadong maliit yung letra, eh, baka yun ang lagi natin ng, uh, basahin natin maigi. Baka meron na uh, opening uh, for additional protection. Well, you also have field health, di ba? Yung commitment ng field health. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yung PhilHealth pala ay uh, meron na uh, inaprobahan din ng Economic uh, Development Cluster, or EDC, sa halagang 420 million pesos. This is to uh, cover for uh, isolation benefit package at 14,000 pesos each. So that's the PhilHealth uh, contribution uh, to the national government uh, response. But of course, the 14,000 doesn't end there. Because assuming any of the patients who are uh, uh, under investigation might develop uh, moderate pneumonia, uh, the 14,000 plus 16,000 uh, moderate pneumonia benefit package, so that's uh, 30,000 pesos. In case the moderate pneumonia deteriorates into a massive uh, or uh, uh, serious uh, pneumonia package, which is 32,000. So, malaki. Plus, kung lalagay mo pa yung 6,000 peso testing na time is 3, on the average, 18,000. So, 18,000 plus 16,000 uh, plus 32,000 plus 14,000. It's about 58,000.
Okay. Um, Ia? Apo, Secretary Duque, uh, good evening, sir. Sir, uh, pinapatanong po, ano, uh, dahil wala pong public transport, wala rin yung mga TNVS, uh, paano daw po, halimbawa, nagkasakit yung isang uh, tao, uh, papaano siya makakarating sa ospital, sapat pa yung mga ambulansya natin? Uh, Oo oh, naman, marami naman, lahat man ng ating mga ospital may ambulansya at uh, meron din ang uh, Philippine Red Cross, maraming maraming uh, ambulansya ang Philippine Red Cross. So we complement our ambulance uh, capacity with uh, that of the Philippine Red Cross. In fact, pati yung mga tents ng uh, Red Cross ay available for the use of our hospitals for setting up uh, triaging uh, uh, sites within the uh, grounds of the hospital. So wala pong dapat ipangamba yung mga walang, walang sasakyan na magiging mga pasyente? Uh, wala naman dahil gaya nung sinabi ko, meron naman tayong sapat na uh, ambulance uh, service. Apo. Uh, Kabsek, um, ang BPO exempted, ano? ang POGO po ba, may operation pa rin sila ngayon kahit po, uh, siyempre, meron tayong enhanced uh, community quarantine? Hindi namin napag-usapan. So kung okay. hindi namin napag-usapan, then close. close. Wala, so, wala, siya, wala siya sa aming, wala siya sa aming, ano, wala siya sa mga establishments na napag-usapan namin. So like I said, um, in case of doubt, no. Mm -mm. And then we'll just, um, siguro, like I said, day-to-day -day nga ang aming assessment. So day-to-day -day magkakaroon tayo ng um, panibagong mga resolutions. Thank you po. Uh, Sec. Martin, uh, marami rin po nagtatanong, ano, yun bang mga media vehicle exempted na? Uh, paano po yung private vehicle na mga media naman? The private vehicles, uh, Cabsec, ano bang... Uh, Okay. Yes, uh, according to uh, the DILG secretary, uh, pwede po yung, yung media vehicles at yung private vehicles ng uh, may-ari na miyembro ng media. And I'd, li I'd like also to, to, uh, to um, answer some questions from FOCAP dahil nagtanong sila about their IDs. Would their IDs suffice? Yes, even the IDs of the MPC would also suffice. I understand na maraming expired na ID sa inyo. So within uh, 72 hours, lalabas na po yung uh, mga IDs uh, ng MPC at ng FOCAP. Sec, yung mga uh, editor, yung mga anchor, sila, doon naman sa mga dyaryo, yung mga nag-layout, at maraming <coughs> mga ibang personnel, uh, like sa engineering, doon sa loob ng mga opisina, yung mga satellite man, yung mga line man, uh, kasi sila po ba exempted din? Lahat po, lahat po ng media workers. Basta ang gawin nyo lang po ay uh, mag-submit lang po kayo ng requirements para mabigyan po kayo ng, ng uh, special ID ng International Press Club. Pero, pero, may pero may gusto ko lang siguro dagdagan yung social distancing lang po sa mga media. Hindi naman kayo exempted hmm. sa social distancing no sa mga media offices ninyo. I uh, just wanna point that out. Otherwise, uh, tayo, tayo rin po may hirapan po dito. So the, the, that's why uh, we we highly uh, recommend um, in virtual presser. Yeah. Uh, ah, kung, kung, kung yung iba sa inyo. Yes. Uh, regarding sa vehicle ng media, as much as possible yung, yung uh, business or company media vehicle, pero kung talagang hindi may iwasan, lagyan din ng media sticker yung private car nila. Mm-hmm. Secretary kasi usually ginagamit lang naman yon halimbawa, from house, papunta dun sa company, uh, tapos sasakay ka na ng media vehicle. Kailangan pa po ba? Hindi, ang ibig sabihin, dapat yung private vehicle na gagamitin nyo, sa mga may sticker din ng media para alam ng uh, enforcer na taga media kayo and then tsaka kayo iti-check. Sekretary, may tanong lang dito. Paano daw po yung mga journalist sa uh, provinces? Paano sila kukuha ng accreditation? Uh, ganun din po. The, ang gawin po nila ay uh, mag-email. Email po nila yung kanilang uh, mga requirements dun sa, sa email na binigay ko kanina. So ulitin ko po uh, yung email address na dapat ho padalhan. Uh, itong intl press center at gmail.com 
or IPC0182 at gmail.com. Magpadala po kayo ng letter of request from your respective media agencies at uh, passport size photo. Okay, thank you. Uh, Maglasto na tayo, PN uh, Ace. Okay, Kabsek po. Sir, uh, to, to be clear, sir, yung deadline ng BIR tax filing is still right. April 15. Yes. Yeah, so without any announcements, then ganun pa rin po. Without any announcements, then we'll stick to that deadline. Sir, you said that you will, uh, the IATF will be talking to the economic team. We, well, we cannot, we cannot guarantee anything. So let's just assume that it will stay. Because ayoko rin pangunahan ang maging decision ng task force. But will the task force recommend at least extending the deadline? We will, um, we will submit to um, the economic teams, ano, di ba? Um, Siyempre, they will uh, advise us and then the task force will decide. I don't want to speculate. Sir, uh, kay Secretary Duque, sir, yung mga nurses and ca caregivers who do home care for the sick, kasama din po ba sila, sir, sa exempted? Yes, because uh, sila yung nangangalaga sa mga may sakit, so automatic kasama sila sa exemption. Yes, sir, sir uh, patanong din po. As of now, sir, our mortality rate in COVID cases is almost 10%. Uh, that is reported confirmed case vis-a-vis -vis yung reported death. Hindi po ba mataas yun, sir? It's uh, about 8%, 12 over 142. It's about 8%. But uh, it's only high because we have uh, not done uh, enough uh, testing. We have uh, uh, limited uh, testing capacity, especially the past several weeks. But now I am confident that with uh, many... Uh, testing kits uh, arriving, and many have already, in fact, arrived, we will be able to pick up more uh, positives but mild cases. So that the death, uh, the number of deaths will be further diluted by the number, by the growing number of uh, positive cases. Sir, marami pong uh, ninervyos dun sa case ni Senator Subiri kasi asymptomatic siya. What's the possibility, sir, na marami pa pong Ma cases are uh, ang hindi pa na -re report Well, sabi ko nga, hanggat we do more massive testing, hindi natin talaga malalaman kung uh, ilan pa ang uh, positibo. Pero natututo naman tayo sa mga uh, karanasan sa ibang bansa. Ano, na ang global uh, case fatality rate as a 3.4, uh, 3.8%. Ano. Ang ibig sabihin lang po nito, yung uh, 82%, 82 82 ng uh, COVID cases, mild. Ha, yung mild, yung iba halos walang sin symptoms. No? Uh, yung uh, 15%, uh, ito po yung uh, severe to uh, critic, moderate to severe. Tapos yung uh, mga 5% would be uh, critical. Ito po yung talagang uh, malubha ang kanilang komplikasyon. May uh, ARDS or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome at uh, mula dito yung mga tatlo hanggang uh, sabihin natin tatlo hanggang apat na porsyento niyan ay uh, mga uh, namatay. Uh, doon sa 3.4 to 3.8% na general case fatality rate 80 to 90% mga matatanda na meron mga pre-existing medical problems like cancer, diabetes, hypertension, renal disease. So ito po ang uh, strategiya na gagawin po ng inyong uh, departamento ay uh, talagang tutukan po ang mga highly vulnerable population. Ito lang nga po yung mga 60 years and above, uh, especially with pre-existing medical <coughs> conditions. Sir, another question po. Where do we attribute yung sudden increase ng cases, sir? Uh, yung sudden increase ng uh, are you asking uh, cases of the infection? It is, yes, sir, yes. ngayon kasi 142. Yes, Meron dalawang na dagdag yes, from 140 sir. as of last night. Ano. So, meron tayo yung community transmission. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, hindi mo na po maiugnay doon sa meron bang positive history of uh, travel sa COVID 
uh, affected country, meron bang positive uh, uh, exposure to a positive COVID case. So wala nang gano. You can no longer uh, link it to a uh, history of travel, history of exposure. Ika nga, ando na sa komunidad. Meron na tinatawag na unlinkable uh, clustering of cases you can no longer or untraceable chains of transmission. Yun po. Um, kay Cab Sex, sir, what about yung hotels? No more. No more. So no. what will happen dun sa mga naka-check-in sa hotels? Will you be forcing them out? Well, um, so they uh, they live in other provinces, di ba? Or if they're within uh, Luzon, then they will have to go back to their uh, provinces. Pag Visayas, Mindanao, we'll... Uh, well, actually, no, pagka hotel, uh, we will close them. Tapos sabi nga, as is where is, no? Kung siya ay isang stranded na hindi taga doon, uh, we will make arrangement to the hotel owner kung gusto niya i-accommodate yun as uh, yun yung quarantine area niya at uh, privately na yun. The hotel is closed but uh, some stranded uh, foreigners or, or tourists na nag-decide siya na mag-stay na lang doon, privately pwedeng mag-stay siya doon. Arrangement na lang sa hotel yun. So, bawal staycation sir pag nasa Luzon ka? Pag taga Luzon ka sir? Um, no. Well, hindi kasama sa ano yan eh. Uh, last na, sir, sir, yung ano sir, yung tulong natin sa mga public utility vehicle drivers, ano po yung mabibigay natin, sir? Yun na yung ano natin, yung, yung mga next steps na pag-uusapan na natin. Salamat, sir. Okay, sir, phone okay. in question. Yung loto daw po, papatuloy pa rin. <laughs> oh, sir, loto. We didn't discuss that yet. <laughs> And ano daw po, yung kung pwede daw po ma-consider uh, yung uh, exemption ng mga nasa sektor ng sa sanitizers, alcohol, kasi uh, critical to ngayon kailangan-kailangan. Yeah. Um, ano naman eh? Okay naman yung... Health uh, services naman po yan. So, Pharmacies. I think that can be uh, considered. Okay. Last question na tayo. And, I mean, last two pala, si Ace, and then last na si Vance. Uh, para klaro lang po, yung 72 hours, kailan po exactly mag-uumpisa para klaro, lalo na yung mga may flight? 12 alam, midnight. 12, 12 midnight. midnight to abangan na natin yung 12 midnight, then you count okay. 72 hours. Okay. So, yung mga, um, alimbawa, yeah. yung media workers po, so for now, yung wala pang accreditation, so hindi pa sila maa-cost for now kung sa bagaling nagbiyahe pa sila? No, basta may ID ka lang. Basta may ID pa, Okay. So, ito po, may nagpapatanong. After 72 hours, there will be no more outbound travel, but inbound is allowed. Does that mean after 72 hours, airlines that ferried passengers to Luzon will depart without passengers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ganun ho yung mangyayari? Yes, sir. Bakante po yung, okay. So, tama daw bang sabihin after 72 hours, suspended na rin international air travel sa NAIA? Yes, more or less, pagka going to uh, Luzon. Pero meron pa tayong Cebu, meron tayong Dabao, meron tayong Cagayan de Oro, international airport din naman yun. Ang quarantine natin, oh, or lockdown natin, or enhanced community quarantine, ay buong Luzon. So, do natin i-apply. Now, yung mga nire-repatriate nire ng mga uh, Pilipinos, uh, yun, pwede silang pumasok dito sa NAIA or Clark uh, because you arrange naman yun. No? Anybody, any Filipinos from abroad na gustong bumalik dito, uh, i-accommodate sila. Meron pa daw po bang border checkpoints sa metro after this? Meron pa din. Meron pa rin. Tsaka mga strategic areas. Uh, yung mga uh, expressway, mm -hmm. yung mga main uh, uh, tinatating high-speed uh, ex express uh, highways, uh, they will be manned by the armed forces of the Philippines. Okay, yung concern naman po ng educators, kasi dun sa bagong memo po ni ES, magkaiba po yung regarding sa holding ng classes. Yung bagong memo po ngayon is clear about the suspension in calamity 
situations where no classes are conducted. So, ibig sabihin po ba nito, any form of classes dapat wala, including yung online? Ano? Because ang sinasabi lang naman dito shall continue to be suspended. So, kung ano man yung napag-usapan, hindi ka naman mako-COVID sa online. So, okay. So, they can conduct online classes? Yes. Okay. Tapos, yung will stoppage of manufacturing apply for alcohol, soaps, and other critical hygiene products? How about supply to the stores if they stop? Um, ano naman dito eh? Um, food products and medicine so hindi po medicine kasi yung mga hygiene huh? hindi rin sila food soap hygiene soap. hygiene products soap alcohol oh, soaps manufacturing Opo. kailangan niya because those yeah. are uh, support uh, mm -hmm. health related products like alcohol soap Diba? We always say frequent hashing, uh, hand washing. Hand washing. Mm -hmm. Tapos uh, we say uh, alcohol. So, dapat uh, yeah, makasama sila. So, they can continue. Basic yan eh. They, yeah. Medical yeah. supplies, ganun din po. Lalo yes. na. They can continue with that. Okay. May mga concern din po. Paano daw yung mga homeless sa mga probinsya? Baka si Secretary Anyo to. Kasi may mga homeless sa probinsya, di ba? And then, expose sila sa mga elements. And then, nag-quarantine. How do we address yung ganong mga concern? Uh, katulang natin ng LGU tsaka DSWD pag-address dito. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, last na lang po. May mga nag may nag-comment po dito kasi sabi po niya, sa sari-sari store, yung pisong bawang, pisong sukat, pisong toyo, dapat daw bang magpa-deliver? Pero yung mayayaman na may pera pag nakastock ng pagkain, so yung walang pera magpapa-deliver ng tinging-tinging, -ting, halimbawa isang kanton. Paano daw po yun? Yun po yung reklamo ng mga tao dito ngayon online. At saka yung mga Alam mo, sa community, sanay naman sila na buwibili ng pagkain din. Kaya nga, kasama din sila doon, isang representative ng family, papayagang bumili ng pagkain. Pero pag bumili ka naman siguro, hindi naman isang toyo lang, at saka isang suka lang. Tingi -tingi, oh. Oo, buuin mo na yung isang linggo mo pagkain. Buuin mo na yan para dyan ka lang sa bahay mo. Alam mo, yung mga Pilipino ngayon, ito yung pagkakataong wag magpilosopo. Mayroon tayong problema ang inaharap. Buhay ang nakataya dito. Uh, ibigay na natin yung buong pagsasakripisyo natin para ang buhay na nasave natin sa'yo din at sa pamilya mo. Okay, salamat po. Um, Vance, and then so, totoo na daw pong huli na si <laughs> Joyce Malay. <laughs> Oo, kanina pang umaga sila. Oh. Sir, oh. Sir, good evening. Kay Cabsec Nograles. Regarding kanina earlier, sinabi mo na kailangan delivery lang yung mga food. Now, uh, hindi rin kakain sa mga resto. Now, personal ba pwede kaming makapunta para bumili? No, may isang tao sa bawat household yes. ang pwedeng bumili at uh, umuwi para malimitahan lang po natin yung labas-pasok. Let's eh, say kung malayo, sir, pwedeng gamitin ng private cars? Yes. Pwede, sir. Okay, sir. But again, for essential travel lang talaga, ha? essential travel. Tatanungin din kayo ng mga ano, authorities. Meron lang pahabol si Secretary Guevara. Marami nagtatanong kung patungo tayo sa martial law dito sa mga bagong restrictions na ginagawa natin. I just want to assure everyone that the answer to that question is a resounding no. Although public safety requires it, there is no state of rebellion, there is no state of invasion. Our enemy here is not a human being, our enemy is a virus. So please be assured that we are not headed towards martial law. Thank you. Sir, uh, patanong lang po kay Secretary Duque. Uh, ang sabi po, uh, ilan na pong estimate nila na undetected, unconfirmed COVID-19 cases as of now? Dahil may shortage ng test kits. Ilan? Undetected? Yes, undetected. Depende, marami kasing models na pwede natin uh, pagbatayan. Uh, 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 yung sa WHO, ang sinasabi nila ang... Uh, technical term, are not score. No? Ito yung reproductive rate, reproduction rate ng COVID virus. So, ibig sabihin, for every one infection, pwedeng ma-infection ng two to four uh, others. Okay? So, at 
to uh, uh, reproduction rate over the next five months, sabi ng WHO, pwedeng uh, all over the country, mga 75,000 dapat ang meron na. Okay? Uh, so, uh, yung, kung mas mataas yung gagamitin mong uh, reproduc reproduction rate, three or four, do doble yun. So, yun ang mga uh, ibang mga modeling, pero hindi naman siya exact science. Okay? So, meron din naman nagsasabi na kung ang gagamitin natin batayan ay ang global case fatality rate at uh, 3.4 to 3.6 percent. At gagamitin natin yung 12 as a basis. 400. Ang mga 400, mga 300 plus 400, yun ang from minus 142, so mga 160 something ang uh, hindi natin pa na tutuklasan na positive. Okay, uh, okay. Jo Joyce? Ay, sorry. Saan na lang? Uh, kay Secretary Guevara po. Sir, uh, regarding dito sa mga barangay chairman, let's say hindi sila sumunod, nag-violate sila. Any sanction uh, sa kanila na inyong i-gagawin? Well, and also, kanino po i-report ito kung let's say alam natin nag-violate at hindi sumunod sa patakaran ng community Ano, quarantine. Uh, kanina I uh, already mentioned kung ano yung mga criminal statutes uh, for which one may be held liable. No? Uh, but kung ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay, uh, let's say, non-compliance by a barangay official, then probably in addition to yung kanyang criminal liability, he will also be administratively liable. And all you have to do is to report the act or omission of this barangay official to the proper offices of the DILG, and the DILG will take care of him. Do you have any number regarding that? <laughs> uh, actually, ang local government code, kumpleto yan, ano, ang, ang mayor, may power siya para to suspend or dismiss a barangay captain, uh, depende kung ano yung complaint sa kanya, at uh, siyempre, pwedeng Preventive, preventive suspension kaagad yan. Habang iniimbestigahan, suspended na siya. And so on, even the mayor. At through the DILG, we can also conduct our investigation. So, mayroon tayong uh, number dyan. Uh, may website din tayo kung saan pwedeng ilas yung complaint. Kung gusto niya talaga ng eksaktong number, si uh, Yusek Jonathan Malaya nasa kanya yung number. Okay, thank you, Vance. Last na, uh, Joyce Balancho. Sir, how about yung mga kababayan natin na nakatira sa informal settlers area, those confirmed COVID cases, how, how are we going to manage them? Kasi given their situation, kung saan sila nakatira, baka hindi possible ang isolation? Nasa, nasagot ko na yan kanina, yung ating mga barangay isolation unit at yung ating uh, barangay health emergency response teams ay uh, ilalagay siya doon sa isolation Kung siya pa naman ay uh, asymptomatic o kaya ay uh, person under investigation, pwedeng doon lang muna siya i-quarantine. Pagka nagkaroon siya ng serious symptoms, dadalhin siya sa hospital. Another question na lang, sir. Mabilis na lang. Yung tanker fuel trucks, are they allowed to travel or deliver? Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Joyce. Thank you, Secretary. <coughs> Uh, thank you so much to the members of the press at para po sa mga manunood natin, uh, meron po tayong public briefing uh, Monday to Friday at pwede pong ma-extend ng Monday to Sunday. Ito po ay 11.15 in the morning hanggang alas 12 po ng tanghali. Live po sa PTV, uh, live din sa Radio Pilipinas at um, live din po sa lahat ng mga KBP member station. So bukas po yan, 11.15, kung meron po kayong mga karagdagang katanungan, patungkol po dito sa uh, inanunsyong enhanced community quarantine, uh, tomorrow would be the, the best day. lalo lalo na po sa publiko. This show is for the public. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Martin. Thank you, Secretary Guevara, Secretary Duque, Secretary Nograles, Secretary Anyo, Salamat MPC. Ang tabayanan po ang Lotto Draw, back to me, studio. <laughs> sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network. Kailan ako magiging video sa inyo?